Well, B in the modern world is for blockchain. Um, so we have kind of a major initiative in the um, uh, blockchain area. It kind of started with a whole uh, study that I did, I've been doing for a number of years about computational law and computational contracts. Um, the, uh, just to talk about, um, it's actually a, a, an issue that is strangely related to proofs. Um, if we talk about the world of blockchain um, and what's significant about it, uh, blockchains as ledgers for things are sort of interesting, um, but much more interesting is the general notion, well, so blockchains introduced, like Ethereum introduced things like smart contracts running on the blockchain, but what's much more interesting than smart contracts running on the blockchain is computational contracts running anywhere. And a computational contract is just something where instead of writing a contract in legalese, you write it in code. And our Wolfram language is the best thing, I think the best language that exists as a kind of computational communication language to express the kinds of things that one needs in a general contract. And so one might have a contract that says, you know, it might be a, a snow plowing contract. And it might say, if it snows and it's a weekday, and the webcam that's, that's uh, according to a, a machine learning classifier, the webcam says the parking lot's been plowed, then pay somebody $100. Um, and that whole thing will be written as a piece of code and automatically executed. So we've got quite a, a big initiative in this idea of computational contracts. Um, and uh, actually we are creating a, a separate um, business called Wolfram Blockchain Labs that's dealing with this. The first big thing for Wolfram Blockchain Labs, uh, the main thing is um, creating a computational fact source. So this is a thing which if, you, if you're into the blockchain world, these are usually called oracles. Um, that's a super confusing word. It means, uh, for, the, for them, it means the wrong thing. It's been sort of co-opted by different things. But the basic question is, if you have a computational contract and you want to know, did it, did it rain today in such and such a place? Then ultimately you have to go to some source of facts, some computational source of facts to determine that. And with Wolfram Alpha and our knowledge base, we have the world's broadest source of computational facts. In fact, we have pretty much the only uh, at all broad source of computational facts. And so people who've been experimenting with kind of smart oracles and computational contracts and so on, 100% of them are using the Wolfram Alpha API as their source of computable facts. So what we're trying to do is to make that a more robust and a more general kind of thing that can deal not only with truly public facts, but also with things like facts from IoT devices. Um, the, the main issue is, is the validation of facts. So when you have an IoT device, it's like there's a thing that says, you know, your company will give you a, 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 you know, a, a fitness bonus if you walk more than 5,000 steps a day. Did you actually walk those 5,000 steps or did you hook up a machine to you know, move your pedometer? You either have to model the world to figure that out or you have to do some kind of machine learning anomaly detection. Anyway, that's an example. There's a whole, what will happen with computable facts is, and when there are whole uh, sort of uh, networks of computational contracts is, once a computable fact is determined, there's this whole domino effect that will occur. Once the computable fact says, so-and-so won the election in such and such a place, there's a whole giant domino effect that starts up. So we're trying to figure out sort of what the infrastructure looks like to make sure we actually get the right answer and to secure the whole thing. Okay. So uh, let's see, let's talk about blockchain itself. So we have a lot of functions now related to blockchain in the language. So let's say, let's use Ethereum as the blockchain of, of choice here. And let's go look and let's go ask, what is the most recent block that was mined on the Ethereum blockchain? So there it is, not very big actually. Um, we could go ahead and look at the um, blockchain transaction data for a particular transaction on now we're looking at the Ethereum blockchain, so that's going to hopefully retrieve that block on, the, on the, that transaction from the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and we could go ahead and say, um, uh, we, could, we could do all sorts of things here. We could say, um, uh, okay, this is going to ask for a data set on the Ethereum testnet of um, uh, a particular address and the transactions, the 20 transactions that were done on that particular, with that particular address on the Ethereum testnet. Um, so now we can go ahead if we want to be, um, we can look at tokens 
that are running on, for example, the Ethereum, uh, the public Ethereum network. So this is looking at the CryptoKitty tokens, the CryptoKitty token, this is saying there's the token address, the total supply, the number of holders of CryptoKitties is 82,000, which is um, uh, interesting. Uh, we could ask, for example, for the um, transfers of CryptoKitties, the most recent transfer. So these are the most recent uh, CryptoKitties that have been um, uh, received by people. Uh, or we could ask for, um, uh, we could go to the blockchain and we could ask for, so the CryptoKitties are an ERC721 token. So we can look at uh, all the things on the Ethereum blockchain that correspond to ERC721 tokens. And there we see the, the most used one is the CryptoKitties followed by Gods Unchanged and Blockchain. I don't know what all these are. Um, the, so, um, so for example, we could say, let's look at the um, uh, account of the number of transfers of all of those different kinds of tokens um, of uh, ERC721 tokens. Um, we could do a, a, a log log plot of that, get the result, all sorts of things like this. So this is a way of interacting, of, of treating the blockchain. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two that we've done so far. There'll be a whole lot of other blockchains that we're, we're working with, uh, treating them as sort of a source of data, a new source of data uh, in the world, a bit like financial data. Um, we also have our own blockchain um, running in our cloud. So you can actually just put something into our blockchain, hopefully. There's the, um, uh, uh, the, the ID for that. And if we say we can retrieve that, or oh, actually we can just look at the top, uh, the top of our blockchain, um, the, the last block um, in our blockchain, it's probably just this transaction if it, if it got some. Um, uh, and so now we can just say, take uh, this thing which was stored in our blockchain. So we know, so if you put some, you know, if you put your lab notebook results in our blockchain, then it will get hashed and it will build up, the blockchain will build up. And if somebody wants to say, did you really put that thing from your lab notebook in that blockchain at this time? One will be able to say, absolutely yes, because every subsequent thing on the blockchain is hashed beyond that. But then we can retrieve from the blockchain, and in this particular case, um, we'll get back a, a black disk. Okay, so lots of things necessary to support all of this um, blockchainery. Uh, lots of new things in cryptography, like this is elliptic curve cryptography now supported. Um, we also have um, uh, uh, blockchain is a complicated w uh, business. And one of the things that's really nice with all of this functionality is we get to make computational essays about how things work on blockchains. And so this is a computational essay about how the um, uh, pay to public key hash Bitcoin transaction actually works. And you can actually run it on the Bitcoin testnet or if you're more, if you're prepared to spend money, you can run it on the genuine Bitcoin network. And uh, so people can learn um, uh, how to uh, how how this whole thing works. As you can, it's quite complicated, um, but everything everything just actually works here. <laughs>